Did you know that plant growth starts with the soil? The edaphic environment is the soil and area where plant roots are located. Abiotic and biotic factors affect this environment. Soil provides nutrients, water, gas exchange, and physical support to plant roots. The proper combination of sand, silt, and clay plus organic matter is very important for adequate nutrition and water retention, aeration and drainage, gas exchange, and physical support for the plant. I'm Dr. DeBusk and this video describes edaphic conditions that have a profound effect on plant growth. Abiotic factors affecting the edaphic environment include water movement in soil, water availability, soil aeration, soil temperature, soil pH, and soil salinity. Water movement into the soil is very important because if water does not penetrate the soil surface, water logging or drought can occur. The capability of water from precipitation or irrigation to enter the soil depends on soil texture, soil structure, and the presence of different layers in the soil, together with a variety of other factors. If the soil is subjected to water very rapidly, water will pool on the surface and eventually run off. The pooling of water also decreases the capability of water to penetrate the surface by blocking the surface pores. The downward movement of water can also be impeded because of a hard pan, which occurs when soil is compressed into a very dense mass. This can be caused by the weight of heavy machinery or people. Heavy tractors and harvesting equipment can compress the soil, which causes a hard pan that restricts root growth and water movement, thereby reducing crop yields. Some weeds, such as annual bluegrass and white clover, can tolerate hard pans, which further decreases the plant's quality. In addition to hard pans, the rate at which water moves through the soil also depends on the normal composition of the different layers of soil. The capability of the soil to retain water is important for normal plant growth and development. When soil receives a large amount of water because of irrigation or a heavy rain, soil becomes saturated and water freely drains in response to gravity. After all gravitational water has drained out of the large pore spaces, leaving only the small pore spaces containing water, the soil is at field moisture capacity. This water may be lost from the soil surface by evaporation or from the leaf surface by transpiration. Together, these are called evapotranspiration. When water can no longer be absorbed by the plant, moisture stress occurs, causing the plant to wilt. At this stage, the plant is said to be at its wilting point. The difference between soil moisture at field capacity and the wilting point is called the available water. Soil aeration is the movement of air into the soil. In general, a mineral soil contains about 25% air. Keeping soils well aerated is important for maintaining the proper balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide. High levels of CO2 in the soil are toxic, and low levels of oxygen inhibit root growth. Clay soils are highly susceptible to aeration problems, whereas sandy soils are typically well aerated. Both tomato and pea plants are susceptible to oxygen deficiencies. They will show signs of epinasty, which is the downward bending of the petioles, wilt, and eventually die if the problem is not corrected. In general, at soil oxygen levels that are less than 10 or 12 percent, plants undergo stress that limits plant growth. Maintaining proper soil aeration and water aeration is important for hydroponically grown plants to maximize plant growth and subsequent crop yields. Oxygen levels in the soil are also critical to a variety of microorganisms that are necessary for good soils. The proper soil temperature is important for overall plant growth because Temperature regulates all chemical reactions in the plant and soil. In general, plant roots stop growth when soil temperatures are 5 degrees Celsius, 41 degrees Fahrenheit, or colder. Soil temperature is affected by a variety of factors, one of which is the type of soil. Sandy soils warm up more quickly than clay soils because of the differences in their water content. Sandy soils drain faster, have less water, and have more air spaces than clay soils, which enables them to warm up faster than water-retaining clay soils. In addition, soil temperature is also affected by atmospheric conditions, such as air temperature, wind, and solar radiation. Soil temperature can be modified to enhance crop production. Although it is difficult to control soil temperature in the field, there are many ways in which soil temperature can be modified. Applying plastic or mulch to the soil surface is one way to control soil temperature effectively in the field. 
covering the soil with different colored plastics and mulches have been shown to be very effective. Using light colored plastic or mulch reflects sunlight and lowers soil temperature. Using dark colored plastic or mulch absorbs light and warms the soil. Some growers use black plastic or mulches to raise soil temperature to start crops early. Another way to modify soil temperature in the field is to promote adequate drainage either by modifying the soil texture by adding sand or by using raised beds to promote soil drainage and soil warming. Controlling soil temperature in a greenhouse is not as hard as in the field. Recent research has shown that supplemental root zone heating can have beneficial effects on plant growth because root zone temperatures in greenhouses fluctuate more than in the field. Soil pH is the degree of acidity or alkalinity of the soil. The pH of the soil affects nutrient availability and should be maintained in the proper range to maximize crop yields. For example, nitrogen is most available between pH 6.0 and 8.0. As the soil becomes more acidic or more alkaline, the availability of nitrogen is reduced. In addition, nitrogen-fixing bacteria, called rhizobia, work best in the pH range between 6.0 and 8.0. When the soil experiences low rainfall or it is poorly drained, salts generally accumulate and lead to an increase in soil pH. Soils exposed to heavy rainfall with good drainage typically have a lower soil pH. Soil salinity is the amount of salt, NaCl, in the soil. Salt stress is a major problem in agriculture because it reduces crop yields. Problems with salt buildup come from irrigation water and fertilizers. Millions of dollars are lost annually as a result of salt stress in plants. Selected examples of crop loss with increased salt, as shown by ECE number, the units of electrical conductivity designated by millisiemens per centimeter at 25 degrees Celsius, are shown in the table. When the salt levels in the soil get too high, plants exhibit similar symptoms to water stress such as wilting, reduced plant growth, and in some cases, the appearance of a green to bluish green color. Some plants such as Bermuda grass, oleander, and date palm are salt tolerant. Salt tolerant plants are often selected when planting in landscapes near coastlines. Biotic factors are living organisms that affect the edaphic environment. They include a variety of living organisms from animals and other plants, weeds, to microorganisms. Climate affects the biotic factors, which in turn affect the biotic environment. For any plant pest to become a problem, it must have a favorable environment. The edaphic environment is filled with a variety of simple and complex living organisms. These are organisms can enhance this environment, thereby increasing crop yields, or they can be pests that damage plants. Soil organisms can be broken down into four groups, microorganisms, arthropod animals, non-arthropod animals, and vertebrate animals. The two classes of microorganisms found in the soil are bacteria and fungi. They can either be good or bad for the soil and plant. Bacteria are single cell organisms that can occur in three different shapes, spherical, rod-like, or spiral, and are widespread in the edaphic environment. Bacteria can have a beneficial effect by causing the breakdown of dead organic material, thereby increasing the soil's organic matter content and the overall physical properties of the soil. Bacteria-plant interactions, or symbiosis, have been shown to have beneficial effects in legumes. The bacteria rhizobia species interacts with legume plant roots, enabling the roots to fix nitrogen, thereby reducing the need for nitrogen fertilization. Pathogenic, an organism that causes diseases, bacteria have rod-like shapes and thrive in soil with a pH of 6.5 to 7.5, which is the range that many plants also prefer. They enter the host through wounds or natural pores and cause a variety of problems, such as cankers, spots, and wilts. Although bacterial diseases are difficult to control, bacterial disease-resistant cultivars are now available for many species. Fungi, like bacteria, can also have good and bad effects. Approximately 75% of all seed plants have some form of association with the fungi mycorrhizae and its roots. This association is known as mutualism, which is when both the host and fungus benefit from the association. This type of association is similar to that observed with the bacteria rhizobia species and its symbiotic relationship with legume roots. Much mycorrhizal research has been done to understand this relationship better because the relationship enhances 
phosphorus uptake, which increases plant growth and development. The reproductive structures of fungi are called spores, which come in a variety of sizes, shapes, and colors. Spores are transported by wind, water, insects, birds, and others. Some fungi have coverings that protect them from an adverse external environment. Fungi gain access to the plant by wounds, through natural openings such as plant stomata or directly through hostorium. Interestingly, most plant diseases are caused by fungi. Fungi can be broken down into four classes. Saprophytic fungi, which live only on dead tissue. Parasitic fungi, which live on living tissue. Obligatory fungi, which live on either dead or living tissue. And facultative fungi, which live on both living and dead tissues. Even though fungi cause most plant diseases, they are easy to control. Arthropods are animals that have exoskeletons and jointed legs, whereas non-arthropods have neither. Soil arthropods include termites, ants, weevil larvae, grubs, beetles, and a variety of other insects. An advantage of termites and ants is that they can increase drainage because of the pore spaces they produce in the soil. However, they both also produce large soil hills and lawns, which are unsightly and cause problems. With mowing, grubs cause major problems in turf because they feed on the roots of grass plants, resulting in dead patches in the lawn. Nematodes, also called roundworms, and earthworms are non-arthropods. Nematodes are appendageless, non-segmented, worm-like invertebrates with a body cavity and complete digestive tract and are the most abundant animal found in the soil. Some nematodes are parasites that attack a variety of horticultural crops, including fruit trees, turf grasses, vegetable crops, and ornamentals. One of the advantages of some types of nematodes is that they feed on the mole cricket and other insects, thereby acting as a form of biological control. However, the disadvantage of nematodes is that they feed on the roots of plants and create an entry for disease organisms. In addition, nematodes enter and inhabit the roots, which creates nodules on the roots and reduces the growth of the plant. Earthworms are very beneficial to the soil they inhabit. They do extremely well in areas that are moist and have high organic matter, so they are typically not found in dry acidic soils. They improve the movement of water into the soil and soil aeration by producing holes in the soil. In addition, earthworms feed on thatch and dead material found in the soil, which increases organic matter and promotes better soil structure. Vertebrate animals that inhabit the endaphic environment are small animals such as rats, mice, gophers, chipmunks, moles, and rabbits. Although the holes produced by these animals can increase soil drainage, these holes are generally too big and unsightly. Turf that the rodents have burrowed under also presents a hazard to people walking on it. In addition, rodents cause heavy economic losses to the grower annually because when these rodents come out of their underground holes, they feed on crops and then retreat to their underground hiding place. In conclusion, abiotic edaphic factors include water movement into the soil, soil water availability, soil aeration, soil pH, and saline conditions. The biotic edaphic environment also has a profound effect on the plant. The biotic edaphic environment is rich in a variety of organisms, including microorganisms, arthropods, non-arthropods, and vertebrate animals.